yet he doth deny it. How is the man esteemed here in the city? A very reverend reputation, sir, of credit infinite, highly beloved, second to none that lives here in the city. His word might bear my wealth at any time. Speak sonder. Speak softly, yonder, as I think he walks. Tis so that self chain about his neck, which he forswore most monstrously to have. Good sir, draw near to me. I'll speak to him. Signor Antiphilus, I wonder much that you would put me to the shame and trouble, and not without some scandal to yourself, with circumstances oh so denied. This chain which now you wear so openly beside the charge of shame and imprisonment. You have done wrong to this, my honest friend, who but for saying, for saying on our controversy had hoisted sail and put to sea today. This chain you had of me, can you deny it? I think I had. I never did deny it. Yes, that you did, sir, and forswore it, too. Who heard me to deny it or forswear it? These ears of mine, thou knowest to hear thee. Fie on thee, wretch, tis pity thou livest in, to walk here with any honest man resort. Thou art a villain to impeach me thus. I'll prove mine honor and mine honesty against thee presently, if thou dare stand. I dare do defy thee, poor villain. Paul, oh, tell him not for God's sake, he is mad. Some get within him, take his sword away. Find Dromio's shoe and bear them to my house. Run, Master, run, for God's sake, take a house. This is some priory in, or we are spoiled. Anon, I'm sure the Duke himself in person comes this place to the melancholy vale, the place of death and sorry execution. 
behind the ditches of the abbey. Upon what cause? The sea Reven Syracusian merchant, who put unluckily in, into this bay, against the laws and statutes of this town, beheaded publicly for his offense. See where they come, for you will behold his death. Hands on the duke before he passes the abbey. Yet once again, to proclaim it publicly, if any friend will pay the sum for him, he shall not die. So much we tender him. Justice, most sacred duke, against the abbess. She is a virtuous and reverend lady. It cannot be that she hath done thee wrong. May it please your grace. And Tiflis, my husband, whom I had made lord of me in all I had, a your important letters, this ill day, a most outrageous <coughs> fit of madness took him. But desperately he hurried through the street, with him his bondman, all as mad as he, doing displeasure to the citizens by rushing in their houses, bearing fence, rings, jewels, anything his rage should like. Once I did get him bound and sent him home, once to take order for the wrongs they went. But here and there his fury had committed. And on I went not by what strong escape he broke from those that had the guard of him, and with his mad attendant and himself, each one with ireful passion, with drawn swords, met us again and madly bent on us, chased us away, till, raising of more aid, we came again to bind them. Then they fled into this abbey whither we pursued them. And here the abbess shuts the gates on us, and will not suffer to us to fetch him out, nor send him forth that we may bear him hence. And therefore, most gracious Duke, with thy command, let him be brought forth and borne hence for help. Long since thy husband served me in my wars, and I to thee engaged a prince's word, when thou didst make him master of thy bed, to do him all the grace and good I could. Go, some of you, <laughs> knock at the abbey gate, and bid the lady abbess come to me. I will determine this before I stir. Oh, shift and save yourself! Thy master and his men are both broke loose, beaten the maid's row, and bound the doctor, whose beard they've singed off with brains of fire, and ever as it blaze, they throw on him great pails of puddled mire to quench the hair. My master preaches patience to him, and the while his man with scissors nix him like a fool, and sure, unless you send some present help, between them they will kill the conjurer. Peace, fool! Thy master and his men are here! That is false that does report to us. Upon my life, I tell you true. I have not breathed almost since I did see it. He cries for you and vows, if he can take you, to scorch your face and disfigure you. Ah! Hark, hark, I hear him. Fly, be gone. Come, stand by me. Fear nothing. Guard with halberds. I mean, it's my husband. When he see that he is born without invisible? Even now, we house him in the abbey here, and now he's there, past thought of human reason. Justice, most gracious Duke! Oh, grant me justice! Even for the service that long since I did thee, would I be stripped thee in the wars and took deep scars to save thy life? Even for the blood that then I lost for thee, no grant me justice! Unless the fear of death doth make me do, I see my son Antipolis in Romeo. Justice, sweet grace, against that woman there! She whom thou gavest to me to be my wife, that hath abused and dishonored me! Even in the strength and height of injury, beyond imagination is the wrong that she this day hath shameless thrown on me. Discover how, and thou shalt find me just. <coughs> this day, great duke, she shut the doors upon me, while she with harlots feasted in my house. A grievous fault. Say, woman, didst thou so? <laughs> no, my good lord, myself and my sister today did dine together. So befall my soul as this falls, he burdens me with all. Ne'er, I, I look in the day, nor sleep, nor night. But your highness, she tells the highest simple truth. Oh, perjured woman, they are both for forsworn, and this madman justly charges them. My liege, I have advised what I say. Neither disturbed with the effect of wine, nor heady wrath provoked with raging ire. Albeit my wrongs might make one wiser mad, this woman locked me up this day from dinner. That goldsmith there, were he not packed with her, could witness it, for he was with me then, who parted with me to go fetch a chain, promising to bring it to the porpentine, where Balthazar and I did dine together. Our dinner done, and he not coming thither, I went to seek him. In the street I met him, and in his company that gentleman. There did this poor <coughs> goldsmith swear me down, that I this day of him received the chain, which God he knows I saw not, for the which he did arrest me with an officer. I did obey, and sent my peasant home for certain ducats. He with none returned. Then fairly I bespoke <coughs> the officer to go in person with me to my house. By the way, we met my wife, her sister, and a rabble more of vile confederates. Along with them they brought one pitch, a hungry, lean-faced villain, a mere anatomy and mountebank, 
a threadbare juggler and a fortune teller, a needy, hollow-eyed, sharp-looking wretch, a dead-looking man, this pernicious slave, forsooth, took on him as a conjurer, and, gazing in mine eyes, feeling my pulse, and with no face, as twere, outfacing me, cries out, I was possessed! Then, all together, they fell upon me, bound me, bore me thence, and in a dark and dankish vault at home, there left me and my man, both bound together, till, gnawing with my teeth my bonds and sunder, I gained my freedom, and immediately ran hither to your grace, whom I beseech to give me ample satisfaction for these deep shames and great indignities. My lord in truth doth thus far I witness with him, that he dined not at home, but was locked out. But had he such a chain of thee or not? He had, my lord, and when he ran in here, these people saw the chain about his neck. Besides, I will be sworn to these of years of years of mine. Heard you confess your chain of him, of him after you first forswore him on the mark, and thereupon I drew my sword on you, and then you fled into this abbey here, from whence I think you come by miracle. I never came within these abbey walls, nor ever didst thou draw thy sword on me. I never saw the chain, so help me heaven. And this is false, you burden me with all. Why, what an intricate impeach this is. I think you all have drunk up Cersei's cup. <laughs> here you housed him, here he would have been. If he were mad, he would not plead so coldly. You say he dined at home. The goldsmith here denies that saying. Sirrah, what say you? Sir, he dined with her there. He did, and from my finger snatched that ring. Just true, my liege, this ring I had of her. Sawest thou him enter the abbey here? As sure, my liege, I, I do see your grace. Why, this is strange. Go call the abbess hither. I think you all are mated or stark mad. <laughs> <laughs> Accusing him what thou wilt. Is not your name, sir, called Antipolis? And is not that your bondman, Romeo? Within this hour, I was his bondman, sir. But he, I thank him, not into my cords, and now I am Romeo and his man unbound. I am sure you both of you remember me. Ourselves do remember, sir, by you. For lately we were bound as you are now. You're not pleased, are you, sir? Why look you strange on me? You know me well. I never saw you in my life till now. Oh, grief has changed me since you saw me. Last, in careful hours with times deformed him, have written strangely features in my face. But tell me yet, dost thou not know my voice? Neither. <laughs> Romeo, nor thou? No, trust me, sir, nor I. I am sure thou dost. Oh, I, sir, but I am sure I do not. And whatsoever a man denies, you are bound to. Do not know my voice, O oh, time's extremity, hast thou so cracked and splitted my poor tongue. In seven short years that here my only son knows not my feeble key of unsoon cares. I half my night of life some memory, my wasting lamp some fading glimmer left, my dull deaf ears a little used to hear. All these old witnesses I, I cannot err, tell me thou art my son Antipolis. I never saw my father in my life. But seven years since, in Syracuse a boy, thou knowest we parted, but perhaps my son. Thou shamest to acknowledge me in the desert. The Duke and all that know me in the city can witness with me that it is not so. I ne'er saw Syracuse in my life. I tell thee, Syracusean, twenty years have I been patron to Antipolis, <coughs> during which time he ne'er saw Syracuse. I see thy age and dangers make thee dote. <laughs> Most mighty Duke! Behold a man much wronged. I see two of husbands, or mine eyes see me. One of these men is genius to the other, and so of these. Which is the natural man, and which the spirit? Who deciphers them? I, sir, am Dromeo, command him away. I, sir, am Dromeo, pray, pray, let me stay. Ethan, art thou not, or else his ghost? O oh, my old master, who hath bound him here? Whoever bound him, I will loose his bonds and gain a husband by his liberty. Speak, old Egeon, if thou beest the man that, that, that hast a wife once called Amelia, that bore thee out of burden two fair sons. O oh, if thou beest the same Egeon, speak, and speak unto the same Amelia. If I dream not thou art Amelia, if thou art she, tell me where is that son that floated with thee on the fatal raft? By 
by men of Epidamnum, me and I, and the twin Dromia were all taken up. But by and by, rude fishermen of Corinth by force took Dromio and my son from them, and me they left to those of Epidamnum. <coughs> what then became of them, I cannot tell, I to this fortune that you see me in. Why, here begins this morning's story, right? These two Antipholuses, these two so like, and these two Dromios, one in semblance, besides her urging of her wreck at sea, these are the parents of these children, which accidentally are met together. And Tiflis, the king from Corinth first? No, sir, not I. I came from Syracuse. Stay, stand apart. I know not which is which. I came from Corinth, my most gracious lord, and I with him. Brought to this town by that most famous warrior, Duke Menaphon, your most renowned uncle. Which of you two did dine with me today? I, gentle mistress. And are you not my husband? <coughs> no, I say nay to that. And so do I. <laughs> <laughs> Yet did she call me so. And this fair gentlewoman, her sister here, did call me brother. What I told you then, I hope I shall have leisure to make good, if this be not a dream I've seen here. That is the chain, sir, which you had of me. I think it be, sir, I deny it not. And you, sir, for this chain arrested me. I think I did, sir. I deny it not. I sent you money, sir, to be your avail. By Dromeo, but I think you brought a knot. No, none by me. This person did cast I received from you. And Dromeo, my man, did bring them me. I see we still did meet each other's man, and I was king for him, and he for me. And thereupon these errors are arose. These stupids pawn I for my father. <coughs> and show not me. Thy father hath his life. I must have a diamond. There, take it, and much thanks for my good cheer. Renowned Duke, vouchsafe to take the pains to go with us into the abbey here, and here at large are discoursed all our fortunes, and all that are assembled in this place, that by this sympathize one day's error have suffered wrong, go keep us company, and we shall make full satisfaction. Thirty-three years have I begun in travail of you, my sons, until this present hour my heavy burden ne'er delivered. The Duke, my husband, and my children both and you the calendars of their nativity, go to a gossip's feast, and go with me. After so long grief, such festivity, with all my heart, I'll gossip at this feast. 